Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 27, we want to continue the topics we introduced in lecture 26. That is, we want to continue fact, learning how to factor larger degree polynomials with the goal to using these techniques to solve polynomial equations. So in the previous lecture, we learned things about the remainder theorem, division algorithm, the factor theorem, and how we can use synthetic division to help us factor polynomials. It's gonna be our best friend in this situation. And in particular, our favorite, very, very favorite thing from the previous lecture was the rational roots theorem that tells us a list of numbers to test uh, as with synthetic division to try to find a factorization. So let's say g of x equals x to the fourth minus five x cubed minus five x squared plus 23 x plus 10. By the rational roots theorem, we're looking for all the possible fractions that come about by taking divisors of the constant term 10 with the leading coefficient divisors, which in this case would be one. So when your leading coefficients are is one, you can actually ignore that because the only divisor is gonna be plus or minus one. And I've told you previously that the denominator will always make to be positive here. We'll allow the numerator to vary between positive and negative signs. So we look at factors of 10, we're gonna get plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 10. Now we have to try these options here. Uh, do we try one, two, four, five, or 10? And do we try positive or negative? Personally, uh, it's usually not the big numbers. I mean, although it's possible, it could be 10. I mean, I can't deny such a possibilities, but I'm just saying like from a probability point of view, you're more likely to be successful with a smaller number like one and two compared to the bigger numbers like 10. And so it's better to try, in my opinion, the smaller numbers. I like to start with positive one. Um, I can't really make much of a statement about who's more likely positive or negative roots right now. We'll actually deal with that in the next video, uh, how to determine that. So with without any preference here, we're just gonna start off with one and try that one. So we're gonna divide by one using th synthetic division. So looking at the coefficients in descending order, we get one, negative five, negative five, 23 and 10. Be very cautious, if any numbers got skipped, you do need to put a zero in there. So we go through the process here, bring down the one. Uh, one times one is one, minus five is negative four, times one is negative four, minus five is negative nine, times one is negative nine, uh, 23 minus nine is 14, times one is 14, plus 10 is 24. All right, so it didn't work. So one uh, plus one we can take off of our list. Um, we could try, say, two. Two seems like a good choice. Let's put it over here. So if we try two, same numbers as before, one, negative five, negative five, 23 and 10. So we bring down the one, one times two is two minus three, or minus five is negative three times two is negative six, minus five is negative 11 times two is negative 22 plus 23 is one really close, but then one times two is two plus 10 is 12. Um, so that didn't quite work either. So we wanna take plus two off the list. Don't make, sh make sure we don't take off negative two because that's a possibility. It's like, okay, um, keep on going, I guess. Have an optimistic point of view here. Uh, let's try five. Again, we're just going down the list here. Again, I'm more likely to get a, a smaller number than a bigger one, but you know, it could be 10. Let's try five this time. And so with this technique, there is a lot of trial and error. We're just kind of guessing the root and going from there. Bring down the one. One times five is five, minus five is zero, times five is zero, minus five is negative five. Times five is negative 25, plus 23 is negative two, times five is negative 10. And woohoo, we did it, we found a root, zero is the remainder there. And so whenever you find a root, you jump up for joy, which you can't see me doing that right now, but that's what's happening. Um, then we're gonna consult a factorization. So now we have a factorization of g of x, let's look at that. So first of all, since five worked with synthetic division, that means that x minus five is a fact, or is a factor, and then five was a root. But then we also have the quotient right here, which is another, uh, it's another factor of g. So writing that down, g started off as a degree four polynomial. So we're gonna get x cubed plus zero x squared minus five x minus two. And we wanna now factor this polynomial going forward. Looking at it real quick, it is a degree three polynomial. It's not a difference of cubes or sum of cubes. 
because uh, there's three terms. And I can't use fa group factoring by groups because there's three terms instead of four. So I'm gonna have to try factoring this thing here. But look, look at what we have here so far. If I were to do, if I were to do the rational roots test again using the depressed polynomial right here, notice that you're looking for factors of negative two divided by factors of one. So your possible p's and q's. Don't forget your P's and Q's, right? Uh, this is going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So that's a much smaller list than we had before. Uh, instead of the plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10, we can rule out that 5 isn't going to show up again. Neither is 10. But also, I want to mention that we've already shown that plus 1 and plus 2 didn't work for G. And so all of the factors of the depressed polynomial are factors of G, with the exception of 5, right? You know, that 5 is a factor of G, but not here. The depressed polynomial will have fewer factors of G, but all of the factors of the depressed polynomial of the quotient will be factors of G. So the fact that 1 and 2 failed before means they'll continue to fail. So I'm not going to use plus 1 or plus 2 as I go forward. So my list is I want to try negative 1 or negative 2. And so if I try negative 1, let's just try that one. Uh, so we now do the depressed polynomial. Uh, we're going to do 1, 0. Don't forget that there was a... Um, there was a quadratic there. Some people actually just continue on from here if you want to. 1, 0, negative 5, negative 2. We're going to try negative 1 this time. Bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Minus 5 is negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 minus 2 is 2. So uh, negative 1 didn't work. Let's try negative 2. 1, 0, negative 5, negative 2. Again, there's a little bit of guesswork here, but that's okay. Uh, bring down the 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Minus 5 is negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. And there we go. We found our remainder. Uh, and that is, we found the remainder to be 0. So what we now have is that g of x factors as x minus 5. We get an x plus 2. Since your root was negative 2, you're going to get x minus negative 2, which is an x plus 2. And then take this thing right here as the, the this quotient here. You're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 1. And then we start trying to see if that can factor at all. x squared minus 2x minus 1. Um, you need factors of negative 1 that add up to be negative 2, which isn't possible with real numbers. So in terms of factoring this, with if we're looking for real roots of the polynomial, um, this right here is an irreducible quadratic. We'd have to uh, it, it, we'd have to use the quadratic formula to find the roots of that thing, which we're going to see that the discriminant of such a thing, b squared minus 4ac, you're going to get 4 um, plus 4 inside the square root. So um, it turns out that you'd have some irrational roots, looks like, right there. Uh, and so we can keep on going. So let's try that out. So we're going to get a plus 2, plus or minus all over 2. Simplifying this, we get 2 plus uh, 2 root 2. So notice you take the square root of 8, which is the square root of 4 times 2, which is 2 root 2 like we had before. This sits above 2. And so putting this all together, the roots of our polynomial are going to be 5, negative 2, and then we're going to get 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So you have these two irrational roots plus two real roots, uh, two, two whole number roots, I should say. 5 and negative 2 are rational roots. So this right here is not in violation of the rational roots test because the rational roots test tells us what the rational roots could be. Um, it could be that there are, of course, irrational roots. That's a possibility. Uh, 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. And so we can find the roots of the polynomial. We find them from this factorization. And so finding the factorization is critical to finding the roots of this polynomial. Uh, the two processes by the factor theorem are one and the same.